watch where he catches this. And look at his body positioning. And he has to pull that back around under his feet. Navigate fight night. Key moments. Replay the rounds of action. You want to see it again and again. And to the water for the final time. He's won the race to go along with the championship. Absolutely magnificent. What a strike that is. The following program is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language, and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! So close. The sun has come out in Cardiff, and what a fight night we have in store for you in the Welsh capital. It's a brilliantly matched contest live on Saturday night to kick off a huge weekend of boxing on the zone. Sandy Ryan going for her first world title, 147. That man's Elfa Barrett back in action after a brilliant attempt at his first world title last year. And Joe Caldina back in action after his heroics in this very venue that will be in on Saturday night, looking to recapture the world title. He was stripped off outside the ring through injury. He faces the new champion, the ferocious Southpaw, Shavkat Rakimov, under the guidance of, of Freddie Woach at the wildcard gym. I think on paper, consensus is this is potentially an even harder fight than a gout was supposed to be but we saw what happened then uh, it's going to be an amazing fight saturday i'm i'm buzzing for it i really am you look at it stylistically and i just feel the way that joe cordina finished the fight against Agawa, the way that Rakamov fights, I just feel there's going to be stages where they both stand in the center yeah. of the ring not going to want to take a step back um it's got the ingredients it's got everything there to make this a very 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 good fight from start to finish i mean we see how dangerous rackamock can be we've seen how vulnerable he can be we've seen amazing glimpses of joe cordina we've also seen below subpar performances as well they're both going to have to bring their a game and if they do like i say it's going to be a cracker yeah got uh, an all british uh, an all welsh british title clash the lightweight uh, rematch between gavin grin and craig woodruff should be an absolute barnstorm of that if you watch the first one you know exactly what we're in for sandy ryan against marie pierre all uh, from canada both contesting uh, the vacant title at 147 pounds elf barrett in action against jason sanchez really good late replacement for alex dilmagani had a couple of great fights take cost about oscar valdez uh, 12 rounds 2019 uh, and jordan thompson against the current english cruiserweight champion luke watkins to kick things off as well as a host of fighters on before the bell as well. Um, while we get warmed up for the press Ooh. on the show, Welsh cake, mate, as we were in car. When in Rome. Cheers. 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 Lovely. Mm. Oh, it's gone, isn't it? It's gone, isn't it? <laughs> right, Eddie Hearn is ready. Um, let's head uh, over to the stage. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Prin Hounda from, uh, from here in Cardiff. Thank you, Caitlin Bennett, for those, those kind words. Look forward to a massive night of boxing. Double World Championship header here in Cardiff as the schedule continues around the world on the zone. Of course, recently the return of Anthony Joshua at the O2. This Saturday, a massive night on the zone worldwide. Of course, Joe Caldina looks to become a two-time world champion in Cardiff against the champion Rakimov. But also following that, Javonte Davis against Ryan Garcia live on the zone from Las Vegas as we head for a fantastic run in May as well. Canelo Alvarez against John Ryder in front of 60,000 in Guadalajara. The return of Katie Taylor 
homecoming to Ireland for the first time, two undisputed champions herself against Chantelle Cameron facing off in Dublin on May the 20th and May the 27th. Lee Wood tries to become world champion again against Maurizio Lara. But here to talk about Cardiff right now and two press conferences for you today, the undercard press conference and of course the main event press conference coming shortly as well. We talk about the importance of boxing in Wales and Joe Cordina bringing world championship boxing to Cardiff, but very important to see the development of some young fighters as well. Nathan Howells, Sammy Lee and Spider-Man himself, Brandon Scott in front of me. Great chances for these three young prospects from Wales to produce and be part of a big show on Saturday. Brandon, we better start with you after that fine performance yesterday. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, certainly a character, but they tell me you can really fight as well. Well, yeah, of course I can fight, but you know, you said about the Spider-Man thing. I have to make the most out of such a big opportunity like this. I mean, Gavin, my trainer over there, I'm not, I was saying to him, I'm not used to all these cameras, I'm not used to all this media, so I was saying, uh, Gav was saying to me, look, Brand, uh, great analogy. He said, this is almost going to be like the time you lost your virginity. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if that is the case, then we are in for a quick fight. <laughs> like, I, I am talking like, blink and you'll miss it now. So seriously, guys, stay switched on, because <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Well, your trainer, Gavin Reese, wherever he is, somewhere over there, absolute legend, former world champion as well. And uh, are we going to see the Spider-Man outfit on Saturday night? I think this, is, this could be a thing now. Ah, listen, I'm not going to use a Spider-Man. I've got something else up my sleeve for this really? one. I'm not using all my eggs in one basket. I've got something for the way in tomorrow as well. Really? Okay. But the one thing you, I can say to you is I know how to get a crowd going and I know how to entertain a crowd, but I also know how to fight. So you've got three more things coming. You've got a great performance at the way in tomorrow. You've got a great win walk and you're going to have a great performance. And all those three things, you have a full promise from me. Well, you've livened up this room. Round of applause for Brandon, I think. <laughs> Well, I don't know how you two boys are going to follow that, but Nathan, what have you got planned for us for Saturday night, other than a great win and, um, and improving on and continuing this professional journey? Uh, it's a massive opportunity for myself. I just go on and do what I usually do and box well. OK. Ain't <laughs> as outspoken as him, sorry. You can't follow that one. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you as well. Sammy, as well, uh, big just moment for you as well. Huge support as well coming on Saturday night. Yeah, we've got good support coming on Saturday. I'd just like to fight new Eddie and Matt Room and uh, Lee Eaton for getting me on the show. Um, yeah, I just can't wait to put a good performance on and uh, give the people what they want. Obviously, you boys as well, dying for a Joe Caldina victory because you know victory on Saturday night is back here in the autumn and, and moving towards even bigger nights in Cardiff. Yeah, I'm happy for Joe. We bring these nights back to Cardiff and I hope he gets the win. And I know we're going to get the winner here and we can all do it together, innit? Nice one, Sammy. Miles Gordon Derby, heavyweight prospect. Welcome. Big moment for you as well. Another big card. Always big for young prospects to get on these shows and looking forward to continuing the development on Saturday. Yeah, so just want to say a thank you to uh, Eddie and Frank for getting me on the show. Um, yeah, looking to kind of perform well and make a statement. It's been a little while, a bit of an inactivity, but uh, I'm looking to show that that's not affecting my performance whatsoever. But yeah, we're looking for a good night of boxing. The British heavyweight scene, although you're starting that journey, is in unbelievable shape. You know, without doubt, the most powerful worldwide, not just with the World Championship contenders, but also now with the big domestic fights coming through. You've seen you know, that quartet, really, of Adelaide, of course, the champion Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, um, Sol Dakers as well, the English champion. Great time for, for young prospects to start coming through and looking at those domestic guys as well. Yeah, um, at the moment, just focusing on my own journey, just trying to make sure I take every step uh, as and when it comes to me. Um, and then eventually, hopefully, we'll move up to those kind of rankings where we can fight for titles. And it's more or less just uh, focusing and making sure I'm the best of the best, you know? Good stuff. Look forward to seeing you in action on Saturday night. Of course, this press conference, headlined by a Women's World Championship fight for the WBO Welterweight Championship. Another fight with a young fighter looking to get her shot at a world title against a former world champion as well. Linda Lecker, start with you. Welcome from Peru, former world champion. Uh, staying active and uh, a big fight for you on Saturday night. Bienvenido aquí, Linda. Um, gran oportunidad este sábado. Ex campeona del mundo. ¿Cómo estás antes de, del reto de, de sábado? Hola, ¿qué tal? Este, bueno, muchas gracias por esta gran posibilidad. Muy contenta. Soy de Perú, así que feliz por esta 
gran pelea que se va a dar con mi contrincante Nicolsen. Hemos venido bien preparados a dar una gran batalla, a demostrar que soy la presencia inca de Perú. Así que gracias por la oportunidad a todos. Well, first of all, thanks ever so much for the opportunity to everyone, uh, Matchroom and everyone else here. Um, I'm coming all the way from, from Peru, representing my country, and I'm happy to be doing that. I think it's a great opportunity, this fight. I'm looking forward to a big battle uh, this weekend against uh, Sky Nicholson, my opponent. And I just want to bring a little piece of Peru to this country and give a good account of myself on behalf of Peru. Thank you, Linda, and welcome. Uh, Sky, championship fights for you last time out, Commonwealth Championship. WBC Silver, we know that you've been ordered to fight for the Interim World Championship as well, but this fight uh, back out eight rounds and looking to continue that development. Yeah, uh, I feel like my last fight out was a, a really big learning opportunity for me. Uh, we've learned a lot in the gym. I feel like I'm a much more completed fighter now and I, I really want to show a lot more aggression and spite in this fight, um, something we haven't really seen uh, in my early fights. You're doing that, looking to make the changes, but difficult to do it. Former world champion as well. We see her go 10 rounds with Raven Chapman as well. So nice to try new things, but also a real threat for you on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I uh, watched her fight recently against Raven, who's a, a, a great fighter. Um, she's definitely, my opponent's definitely durable, strong, tough, uh, and that's what I want. That's what I want. So I think that'll be, bring out the best in me as well. Sky Nicholson against Linda Lecker on Before the Bell on Saturday night. We go to the main card. For me, one of the fights of the night, Jordan Thompson, now part of the Tony Sims stable against Luke Watkins. Luke, let's start with you. We had a chat before the presser. You've, you've, you know, you got thrown in earlier in your career um, and you've backed yourself all the way consistently. Come through those tough fights, now on a great winning streak as well, great win last time out as well. Now with a chance to get yourself in the world top 15, live on the zone, big fight, and you look ready for Saturday night. Yeah, it's good to be back, Eddie, um, and good to see everyone. I know, I know everyone, and it's, it's, it's like coming home. This is where I belong. Um, I've been grinding, and I've been honest to the sport, and I've stayed true to my craft, and come Saturday night, you'll see what I've been doing. Obviously, those moments where, you know, I remember you fighting Lawrence Acoli and, and a number of other big fighters as well, those experience that you've had, you know, those times where you thought it might be over, kept you humble but kept you honest in the game, and now worked your way back to this opportunity. You've got a lot of experience versus Jordan in this fight in terms of what you've been through in your pro career. You, you think that's going to put you in good stead when things get tough in there? Experience is only good if you can draw on the experience um, you know, in life. If you don't use that, you're wasting it. So absolutely, it's just something that's in my arsenal that I can use. Obviously, he's got what he's got. I've got what I've got. And we're just going to let it unfold Saturday and you know, I'm going to do my thing. When you look at what he's got, great attributes, great athleticism, big puncher as well. Saw him, you know, get hurt in the back end of the fight against Duco, which was a, a good step up as well. Looking to take him to deep waters, is that the plan? Absolutely, absolutely. My plan is to drown him, absolutely drown him. He, he's a good fighter. I, I would never disregard a man. He's, he's where he is. He's 40 to know, and he's doing well. But I believe in myself, and I back myself 100%. And come Saturday night, it's for me to be victorious. Well, Jordan, I've seen you uh, on Instagram with your goggles in the pool. I hope you can swim. A very good swimmer. Very good swimmer. Good. And uh, ready. This is a real fight. A real fight, exactly what you wanted. Um, as you look as, like I said, about the heavyweight division, great fights domestically as well. And this is a really good domestic cruiserweight matchup on Saturday. No, definitely. This is what it's all about. I think I'm at that stage in my career now where I want those tests. I want those level ups. You know, this is, this is good opposition. He's a well-known fighter. He's, he's operated at a good elite level on the domestic scene as well. He's been in there with a good couple of names. So... It's all about going in there Saturday night and proving what level I'm at and, and what level I know that I'm at. First fight under Tony Sims, um, old school trainer. See all these early starts, Mate. triangle <laughs> steps. Looks pretty brutal. You made the sacrifices. Long, long travel in for you sometimes as well. Worked really hard in this camp. No, definitely. It's been, it's been a long, tough camp. You know, like you said, made all the sacrifices, all the changes and put myself in some real uncomfortable positions. But I think one thing about this camp is I became real comfy in those uncomfortable positions. And so now it's just about going out there, like we say, grinding on those early mornings to shine on them late nights. Well, tremendous cruiserweight matchup to open the main broadcast on Saturday night. Jordan Thompson against Luke Watkins. Another great matchup, an important matchup in the super featherweight division as well. Jason Sanchez against Zelfa Barrett. Of course, Zelfa Barrett, so prominent for this card. Tremendous fight. 
against Rakimov for the world title in Abu Dhabi and of course wants Joe Caldina to win on Saturday so he can face him later on in the year. But Jason, start with you. Welcome. Um, a big moment for you. Great career again. Been thrown in some deep fights. Had a great fight with Oscar Valdez for the world title. Never been stopped before. A great fight between you and Zelfa Barrett on Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight. You know, um, I stay ready. I'm always in the gym and um, this opportunity came by and uh, I'm excited and uh, ready to take the opportunity. Like Luke as well, you've been thrown into those big fights before, sometimes with short notice as the away fighter, of course Oscar Valdez and, and the likes as well. You've had great experience in your career to deal with nights like this. Yeah, you know, I've gone all 12 rounds and uh, went with Oscar Valdez. I feel like uh, I lost the fight, but uh, I learned a lot of experience and, you know, I just stayed in the gym working on my mistakes and stuff and I feel like uh, I'm going to get the victory. Delph, welcome. Um, an interesting opponent change for you on Saturday night, certainly one with a lot more experience at world level as well. Coming off that great night with Rakimov that didn't go your way, but it was a tremendous fight. You had him down, you had him hurt in that fight as well. You gain a lot of confidence from that, that performance as well. Yeah, of course. Um, I know I'm world level. I know what I'm about. You know, um, Sanchez is a good fighter. I respect him for taking it late, but I'm just going to show my level Saturday night, man. I'm sure how good I am. How hungry did that Rakimov fight make you? I mean, you had him hurt in the fight. It was a times... We thought you were going to win that fight as well, but a great occasion. And, and like you said, just proves and confirms the fact that you are a world-level fighter. Yeah, it's more just for myself. You know, my uncle Pat always tells me I'm world-level. World and, you know, my uncles. And sometimes when you hit that surface and I felt comfortable, it, it proved it to myself. You know, some people can say things, but I've done it and I, and I believe it. And I know that I can be a world champion. So, you know, I've got, I've got to get rid of Sanchez and then, you know, we move. I know everyone says don't look past Saturday, but mm. for you, you want to make it clear you want Joe Caldina to win this fight and you want a shot at that world championship again later this year. Yeah, no doubt. You know, um, like I said, I can't get Sanchez out of the way. He's, he's, he's my opponent, but that's, that's, that's the way forward, Joe, to win. I hope he wins, you know, but it is what it is. Sanchez this Saturday. So for Barrett against Jason Sanchez, another tremendous fight for the main card as is this one as well. There's something about the British title and especially something about the British title when there's two Welshmen fighting for it. The atmosphere for this fight is going to be sensational. One of the fights of the year in 2022. Gavin Gwynn, the champion against Craig Woodruff. Craig, I'll start with you. Um, kind of similar to Luke, really. You've been thrown in those fights repeatedly. You've turned your career around. Everyone knew you had plenty of ability. Now you're getting longer camps. Now you're getting preparation. Tremendous fight with Gavin last time. Now, in Wales, on Saturday night, a chance for you to become British champion. Yeah, um, most definitely. Um, uh, like, like you said, I was thrown in, a full, uh, thrown in a deep end when I was a kid. Where I never used to train, I never used to live the life. I was a completely different person. I just didn't have any love for the sport. But I'm, you know, I've grown up and um, I've got my head on in now and I'm training and dedicated and I'm ready to show our Saturday. Talk us through that fight last time out uh, and what's going to be different this Saturday for you other than, I'm sure you'll say, the result. Um, last time out, I, I honestly thought I'd win it. Uh, you know, majority of people thought I'd win it. Um, and, I, you know, I was a bit silly in there some rounds, you know, letting it, me give him rounds away and stuff. But I'm going to stay switched on and, and show my class Saturday. Um, in terms of Gavin Gwynn, I saw in some of the media stuff yesterday, it feels like you can't stand and battle it out with him. You know what you get from this guy, just comes forward relentlessly as well. You're, you're ready to stand your ground and fight him at all quarters on Saturday. Well, if he thinks I can't stand, he's in for a big shot then, isn't he? Because I can promise you I can stand with anyone. Gav, um, I've got to say, Gav, as well, your career turnaround's been fantastic. I remember the disappointment of you being thrown in the deep end continuously in all these tough fights. Joe Caldina, one of them, and then fight camp at, at Matchroom HQ as well. And you told me, I will win the British title. And I have to say, I, I thought, you know, unfortunately, you were going to be one of these great grafters that wouldn't. You went on, you won the Lonsdale title. Um, you want to win that outright as well, of course. But a chance for you to really make big moves on Saturday night. And you don't want to let this slip after all that hard work. No, definitely. It, like, it took a lot of hard work to win that title. Um, I was always the B-side going into the fights and then... Uh, just through hard work and uh, determination, I went on and won it. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to putting on a really great performance on Saturday night. He says last time out he thinks he deserved the victory as well. 
do you expect him, as he said, to, to stand and trade with you on Saturday night? We know with you, you're, you're relentless. You come forward, yeah. great work rate. Is that what you're going to bring in this packed out arena on Saturday? Yeah, definitely, like 100% maximum violence is all I bring. I just love it. Um, but he ain't going to stand and trade with me. I know for a fact he ain't. He's saying he is, but it, that's not his game plan. He's going to dance and move and look pretty, but I'm going to make it look ugly and be on his chest. And finally, for you, for everything you've been through in the career, all the hard work, as the A-side, late on the TV card as well, on a packed-out Cardiff arena on Saturday night. Going to have some fun in there and enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. I, d I just want to say a big thank you to you and Matt Room for having um, this fight on. It's uh, a brilliant card to be on. And um, I was there last time when Joe won the world title, and um, we'll we'll be uh, supporting Joe now. S straight after the fight, we'll be coming straight back out to watch Joe go on and win the world title back. Well, thank you, Gavin. Gavin Gwynn against Craig Woodruff. Tremendous fight for the British lightweight title. As is this fight, the vacant WBO world welterweight championship between Sandy Ryan and Maria Hule. A great fight and a great opportunity for an English fighter to go on, become world champion and put herself right in line for some big unifications and undisputed fights as well. Maria has different opinions on that. Welcome. You spoke fantastically well in the, in the media interviews yesterday. Great opportunity for you. You're here to fight. You're here to win the world championship on Saturday. Exactly. I came here uh Maybe some people can think that I'm here as a tourist, but uh, you have a beautiful city here, but I want to be the champion. So I'm here to leave the country with uh, that belt. Seen some of your footage as well, all action, you, you come to fight, you look to, to, to force the pressure. That's what we're gonna win, see from you on Saturday night, obviously. One chance, this chance to become world champion, you have to make it count. Yeah, I'm gonna give all that I have. I work very hard during this training camp and I'm ready for that. Sandy Ryan, tremendous amateur. Not a whole lot of experience as a pro, but the experience she does have is against some great fighters, some former world champions as well, expecting a tough fight from Sandy. Normally a career light well to 840 pounds. Do you think your size could be important in there on Saturday? Yeah, I'm ready for anything she can give me. I know she have a, a big amateur career, but uh, I'm here to fight, so be ready. Sandy, um, amazing turnaround. You know, we talked about it. I've talked about it in various interviews as well. But from the defeat in that early stage in your career to be sitting here ready to fight for your first world championship on Saturday, a massive moment for you in Cardiff. Yeah, massive. Um, this is my dream and it's going to become reality on Saturday. And um, what she said in the inter in her interview, she's bringing the pressure. I like the pressure. Bring the pressure, okay. but honestly, in, and I also hear that she, she's going to just throw punches for the whole 10 rounds from round one. I mean, if you think that you can win a world title by doing that, you're crazy. World level, this is, this is world level, and I'm going to show you that Saturday. We've seen a real mix of your style evolve. Early on, you were walking opponents down. Then in the, the Farias rematch, you had to box and move a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. She is going to bring the pressure, but you, you're willing to do everything that you need to do to, to win that world championship on Saturday. Yeah, you know I can fight. So, can she fight? Has she been chin-checked? I've been chin-checked. Um, and I boxed, and I've gone into a fight. So, whatever it is, but honestly, I, I'll, I'll fight her if she wants to fight. Bring it, bring it. And of course, we know we don't look too far beyond Saturday night, but we do know the prospect of a, a McCaskill fight, an undisputed fight. Things can evolve very quickly, especially in the women's game, from winning a world championship to unifications to undisputed fights as well. You must win this fight on Saturday. Exactly, it's a must-win fight, and I'm used to that from early, my early fight, so I know what, what's on the line, and um, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Well, it's going to be a tremendous battle. Sandy Ryan against Maria Hule for the WBO world title on Saturday. Co-main event, part of our doubleheader in Cardiff, of course. Joe Caldina trying to become a two-time world champion against the champion, Shavkat Rakimov, here in Cardiff, live on the zone around the world. We're going to stop now for photos and head-to-heads with the fighters, and we'll be back for the main press conference shortly. But if anyone's followed me on Instagram, you'd know what a big eater Chris Lloyd is. He's eaten all of those. Yeah, he's put it under the desk. <laughs> um, <laughs> ten fights. 
on the bill. Uh, we just heard from fighters in nine uh, of them. All starts at 4.15, uh, live and before the bell. Um, you'll be with Sonny Edwards, I think, aren't you? Yep. Right? yep. Sonny, anyone else? Is it just you and Sonny? I just think me and Sonny, yeah. I yeah. think Barry might pop down. At cool. Some point. Um, so, Miles Gordon Derby uh, and Phil Williams will be kicking us off. Uh, Sammy Lee, Nathan Hauser, and Brandon Scott, the uh, the Welsh trio on before the bell as well. Sky Nickerson looking to go 7 0 against Linda Lecker. Um, so, that will take us all the way through to about 7 o'clock um, on the zone local time. And um, we heard through some of the fights. Quite interesting listening to Luke Watkins there. I think. He looked at the Vassal Dutsar fight last time, as a lot of people did. I mean, Jordan Thompson, for, for you know, nine and three quarters of, of, of that fight, was completely, almost in second gear sparring mode against a guy that went life and death with Chris Billum Smith not 18 months before, and then suddenly unraveled in 30 seconds. And we've been talking about this, haven't we, that he knew he, knew he had to make a change, went and joined Tony Sims' gym, and I think he even in the time between the start of January and now, has learnt an awful lot, particularly a lot about inside and close-up fights. So we could be in for a really good scrap. Yeah, I it? think so. Look, Watkins there saying that he's going to lean on his experience, especially at the, the higher level that he's fought at, and and try and unsettle Thompson, who, yes, there, there was... Look, I, I think there was a lot of questions asked, but there was questions answered. You know, he did get up, he, you know, he, he was forced on the back foot for a lot of the time. It was uncomfortable, but there are moments that you can learn from. You're not always going to have it your own way. Um, and look, I think that the work with Tony, and we spoke a lot about this on the train on the way up, the, the work that they do inside at Tony's gym, we call it the box. Where How big is that box, by the way? Yeah, what, what literally, you sort, of you're sort of there. There's no room whatsoever, and you're forced to fight inside. And it it's it, funny, from, from me, using myself as an example, I was a really outside, rangy yeah, fighter. Yeah. I became very comfortable fighting inside. You're, you're forced to learn very quickly. It's uh, Miles Gordon Derby. He'll be kicking things off. And uh, Brandon Scott, what has he got in store for us tomorrow? Spider-Man yesterday. What a great talker as well. Uh, looking forward to seeing him in action uh, with uh, Nathan Howes as well um, and Sammy Lee, who, of course, has had his pro debut three years after his last um, amateur contest, one of the top sort of Welsh um, internationals. He was due to go to the Tokyo qualifier, got injured. Lewis Richardson then went to that qualifier and, of course, through the pandemic. I think we're quite lucky to actually have him back at all. It was a long time where he felt he wasn't going to be boxing uh, again, but he will be back in action. Uh, second on the bill, Sky Nicholson looking to go 7-0. She'll be the last contest in the Lecker from Lima in Peru, 15 and 6. Decent record, solid opponent. And well, as you heard Eddie mention there, went the distance with Raven Chapman, who can really punch. So I think that probably has got the eight rounds written all over it. And then these two, really, really interesting to see. I, I think consensus is speaking to Tony in the hotel earlier, Tony Sims, just how hard Jordan Thompson punches and everybody he's sparred with just says frightening power. And I think at some point. If he lands clean, it's going to be a tough night for this man. But he's a proven, very well seasoned and, and a very competent domestic fighter. Yeah. And the, the reigning English, English champion, though the belt's not on the line, he's, he's achieved a lot. Yeah, absolutely. A very experienced individual, uh, full of self-belief. And he'll try his absolute best to ask Jordan Thompson some more questions. We'll find out a lot more about Thompson Saturday night. Yeah, I think he wants that as well. Uh, Thompson, a really good fight uh, over 10 rounds to kick things off and then Zelfa Barrett off a, off a six-week camp. What a valiant effort it was against Shavkat Rakimov out in Abu Dhabi on the Bivol Ramirez undercard. And well, I think if Joe Cordina is successful Saturday night, we've got a little bit to, to thank, a bit of praise to this man because he's laid out somewhat of a, of a blueprint and exposed a few things about Rakimov that we didn't necessarily know before that fight. He was so close. He was boxing so nicely on the back foot. That uppercut was an absolute peach. He took the range away from Rakimov uh, and fired out that beautiful right uppercut. He hurt Rakimov to the body also. He was boxing lovely, but yeah, he just he just come back into the fight. But he seems to me as if he's peaking with that experience at that level. Uh, he's already beaten uh, a former world champion, Kiko Martinez, though it was very close. And he can lean back on that experience against Rackham. I think, do you know what? I was very, very close. And a quick shout out to Alice Dilmagani, of course, was supposed to be his opponent, but he's injured. We wish him well, top guy and a, and a very good fighter too. So we, we hope he'll be back and on one of our cards uh, soon. Jason Sanchez, an unbelievably good replacement at short notice, usually at 126 on, on a couple of weeks, but has been keeping fit, waiting for an opportunity. Went to well with Oscar Valdez in 2019, but this is potentially going to be fight of the night. Yeah. British lightweight title on the line, the champion there, Gavin Gwynn and Craig Woodruff. They were old sparring partners. Woodruff, I think people felt was, was going to be a little out of his depth, but my word, he was anything but. And I think there was a, a case if you had to 
give it either way by a round, and that was all that was in that fight. Maybe you go to, to Craig Woodruff, but what a fight, a, a complete clash of styles, but they gelled brilliantly uh, as well. And how will these two gel on Saturday night? The vacant WBO title at 147 pounds for Marie Pierre, all from Canada there, one of the Sandy Ryan as well, and I mean, I think all the lessons Sandy Ryan learned last year in just six fights, she's she's ready for this opportunity. I I, I think this is is another great fight. When I look at them stylistically, I've watched both of them. We know Sandy very well, but who I've watched her and she can fight. Let me tell you, she moves her head, she's aggressive, she comes to fight, she looks to hold centre ring and, and take the fight to her opponents. And we know that that's what Sandy Ryan likes to do. She, she, she has that red mist, she wants to get stuck in. And when I look at this stylistically, what's on the line also, I think that could be a cracker. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, that's our chief support. Uh, 10 rounds for the vacant WBO World World to Weight title. We'll clarify with Eddie Hearn. He mentioned uh, in the week that of course they have agreed uh, undisputed w with Jessica McCaskill if they come through this I believe the IBF is vacant so we're going to ask him yeah. about what the situation lays uh, with that one and if that is definitely in place if she comes through this one on Saturday um, that's a really really good chief support um, and of course we have got our main event presser coming up momentarily the fighters are standing by ready to hit the stage and uh, this is what that full bill looks like as I mentioned starting at seven o'clock local time in Cardiff Jordan Thompson against the English champion at cruiserweight Luke Watkins. That belt, they're not on the line. Selfa Barrett was due to face Alex Dilmagani, but Jason Sanchez, a really, really good replacement for one of these two to get back in the mix at world level. Gavin Gwynn and Craig Woodruff, an all Welsh, British lightweight title clash. Third from the top of the bill, and Sandy Ryan and Mary Pierre all from Canada will contest the vacant WBO world welterweight title before our main event, Shavkat Rakimov, Tajikistan's first major belt holder, beating Zelfa Barrett, who's also on the card last year in Abu Dhabi, against the man who won the belt in such dramatic fashion. One of the moments of the year, it was knockout of the year in Cardiff against Kanichi Agawa, Joe Caldino, a right hand from the gods that created his dream moment as a fighter to win a world title by knockout in front of your home fans. Um, and of course, the course, uh, to success rarely runs smoothly and for Joe it's been a difficult year but that fire burns I think more than ever. Oh absolutely first and foremost that is the knockout I've watched most in my life and let me tell you I've watched some but like, it was an absolute peach of a right hand but you know having spoken to Joe and, and look I think this all stems from the, the, the extensive fabulous amateur career he had like over 250 fights I think it's something re remarkable travelled all around the world at yep. all the major events there's a confidence, uh, a, a self-assured uh, individual in Joe Cordina. And I think sometimes, though he was bitterly disappointed um, having been stripped, I feel he understands with that experience as an amateur, knowing the pros now, that the stars have kind of, sometimes things happen for a reason. The stars have aligned, and now he's got the opportunity to be a two-time world champion, you know, create even more history. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and there seems to be this real... I, I just see him outside the hotel. We come in, he's uh, he's switched on, he's focused, but he's calm, he's relaxed. He's, like I say, self-assured. He knows that this isn't going to be an easy fight. This is going to be a hard fight, but he's got exactly what it takes. All the ingredients, all the know-how to win this one. Good stuff. Well, it builds to a brilliant uh, main event. It will cap things off in Cardiff where we get a repeat for the Welsh Wizard or will Shavkat Rackham will be taking the belt back east. It will be done and dusted by around 11 o'clock here on Saturday night, but it's only the beginning of a massive weekend of boxing live on The Zone.
obviously we're supposed to say that's a good schedule, but that's a good schedule. That would do if nicely. I, if we work for Queensbury, we'd say that's a good schedule. <laughs> that would do very yeah, nicely. Very, very nice. Lots coming up, of course. Davis and Garcia overnight will be uh, will be joining them. Uh, I think on the live broadcast, we'll be hearing from Addy, uh, who's joining the American team out there. Lucky sod out in Vegas. He does. He's li living the dream, yeah. that man. He's good, though, isn't he? Uh, and what a brilliant fight that is uh, overnight as well. So I think we'll be pulling the, the full 24-hour session, and I hope you will uh, join us as well. Um, so we'll be hearing from Joe Caldina and Shavkat Rakimov. Um, let's just talk a little bit about um, the, the, the main event. I, I guess what we saw in Rakimov last time is, is what we tend to get from him. A, a Freddie Roach trained southpaw. He's offensively as dangerous as you think he's going to be. I was looking at the compi box stats, thanks to the Can Canobios and compi box for sending those through, by the way. He throws about 10 punches above um, the super featherweight average. We know he's busy. What are you laughing at? He's not, not a stats man. <laughs> stats are, right. on, yeah. but, but he's not as accurate as, as Cordina. Yeah. Cordina is much more efficient. And I think that really tells the story of what we might see there. Cordina uh, on the back yeah. foot, maybe throwing a little bit less, but accurate with his work. It, look, I, I, he has to improve. He has to improve from that fight. He does, because he will get... Joe Cordina is so switched on. that He will get caught with that right hand. I mean... Look, we've seen how spiteful he is, uh, uh, was against Agawa. The right hand straight down the middle. But for me, it was the vulnerability with the, the uppercut. Yeah. He's so aggressive, Rakimov. Naturally, he falls over the front foot. He doesn't mean to, but he just wants to get so close well, to his Fre opponent. Fre Freddie Roach fighters have traditionally been very good of, uh, offensively. Not not always the best defensively, because they're letting the hands go so much, yeah. they are vulnerable in that And he just, like, he just wants to get to his opponent. So he's, he's in this position. And that's why Zelfa caught him with the shot. It's a nice little feint. Skips out of range, bang. That's Joe's bread and butter. Yeah. That is what he does. So for me, I, I feel Rakimov has to improve. You can't just go in there thinking, oh, we'll get to him late, I'll get to him late. Because when you're in there with someone like Joe, with, with the, the just the know-how, yeah. that self-belief, that, 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 you know, like I say, that know-how, you get found out. Before you know it, 12 rounds have passed and you've been comfortably outbeaten if you haven't already been stopped by walking onto those sort of shots. The one thing Rakimov does need is momentum and he likes momentum. And I guess the more you back up and the more space you give him, the more he rolls forward. And the, diff the more difficult that becomes if you're the fighter on the back foot. The, the one criticism of Barrett for how brilliant he was and the shots he picked, he was moving so yeah. much early, look, over moving. I, I, drove you mad. I drive you mad in the comedy desk. I'm always like, look, when you fight in the centre of the ring, if your back touches the ropes, get back to the centre ring and allow space behind you. And like you said there, there was one thing, Zelfa was using up an awful lot of energy. Didn't box him in tight enough, sir. No, no, you need to get round, back to centre, back to centre, start again, start again, start again. And look, I'm telling you now, having been with Tony for about 11 years as a professional, he won't be happy with Joe on the ropes. Right. He'll want him moving back to the centre ring. He won't want him circling the ring. Um, spit smart. Uh, ring positioning is, is crucial, but for, for Rakimov, he, he's got to be quicker on those feet. He's got to be quicker. I just feel if they look, he has to improve, and I'm sure he will have improved. He watch that self fight back and think, I can't fight like that again. I can't. You know, you, you'd have to say Joe Cordina is a step above Zelfa. Uh, he's proven so far. He's going to have to up his game. I just think it's an absolute cracker. I do. You know, I, I, I really, really do. It, it, styles will gel, no doubt. Okay. Um, yeah, looking at the Jojo Diaz fight, that was very much you go, I go. They just stood and traded in yeah. the pocket for pretty much 12 rounds. cordina has got a lot more in his arsenal, a lot more variety. Yeah. Um, but I think that the sense is we will find out more about him at world level than we did in the Agawa fight, because although he, li he lined up the, the best punch of his entire career, the fight didn't develop at all. It barely got started. So we don't really find anything more that we didn't already know about Cordina in that fight. I guess this is a fight that we may find out more of what he's got in the locker. Yeah, I, I agree as far as this will go longer than the Agawa fight. But I think what we did find out about the Agawa fight is he does genuinely carry world-class power. Yeah. We see him not Hernandez spark out of fight camp, but Hernandez isn't an Agawa. I think coming up to 130 certainly helped him. Exactly. Out. Like, and uh, we, like, we found that out about him. We found out that he can set traps at that higher level. You know, it's easy setting traps against lower level fighters that are going to take the bait, but Agawa took the bait, a very good, very dangerous fighter, and he knocked him out. So we found out that, he, you know, he's switched on, he's sensible, he knows how to set the traps, and he can punch. But this, like you say, will ask some more questions. He's going to have a man in front of him till the very end. He's going to keep working, keep ploughing forward. The fighters are all floating around here doing various media interviews. Looking forward to seeing uh, Cordina and Rakimov shortly. Um, Rakimov, uh, the thing that stuck in my, my memory last time, the first time we saw him walk past in Abu Dhabi, he looked pretty dry during, during fight week. Eyes were sunken. During the fight, 
couple of times he complained uh, about being hit low, low by Barrett, but actually in hindsight, yeah. they, they weren't low shots. And so there was clearly something that was bothering him there. Uh, do, you, do you think, I know obviously Tony would have spotted that Joe too. Do you think they would look at that as maybe a sign of a bit of mental fragility or perhaps weakness of the body because it's yeah. tight of the weight? And do you think body could be an area of... I, I, I think so. And I think we'll see a lot of changing of the levels. I think we see the taps upstairs drop into the body. I think we'll see that quite frequently. Um, I think it's so important to be, uh, you know, cute and smart with the work. You jumping in, Ed? Yeah, hey, How are you, sir? Very well, thank like you. The, no, like the what Welsh... was this? The Welsh cakes? Yeah? Well, well, it's down, actually, minute. There's yeah. a pot one down there, mate. Well, it's lovely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that half-eaten yeah. one down there, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> have a little bit. Just one, the bit that's half-eaten and resting yeah, on the metal. It's like a little shark we'll one after you, mate. Board, it? Um, we were just saying, as much as the, the, the Agawa moment was incredible last year, probably one of the moments of, of the year, we didn't learn an awful lot about Gordina, really, in terms of a fight going deep at world level. There's a sense, is there not, that Rakimov could be the man to to bring the best out of Joe and show us what he's got? I mean. I am convinced that Joe Caldina wins his fight by stoppage. I think it's going to be harder work than the Agawa fight. I think there's going to be moments, which, to be honest with you, I think there would have been moments in the Agawa fight where Joe would have been chin-checked. You know, they would have questioned his, his strength, you know, his will. Rakimov will do that, but Rakimov, very emotional fighter. Mm. You know, he does make mistakes. He does jump in. And I cannot not see Joe pinging him on the way in, you know, we saw in the Zelfa Barrett fight, he just walks forward. You know, I'm sure Freddie Roach will get the game plan as good as it can be against Joe, but I just feel like he's absolutely perfect for Joe Caldina to not have to go out and try and look for that unbelievable show real knockout. I think it'll just come. And I expect it to be tough. It's what you want, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, Joe well, was going to have to fight at Rakimov anyway. Yep. So yep. all that's happening is he's doing it as a challenger when he should be a champion. And he has had the blueprint laid out for yeah. him a little bit by Zelfa yeah. Barrett, who will have a lot to thank for if it goes well on Saturday. Yeah, Zelfa hurt Rakimov in the fight, but Rakimov did what he does to win fights, yeah. which is to wear you down, to force a very high work rate, you know, to, to tire you out, to hit you around the side of the head, shots that might not look, you know, like one-punch concussive shots that are just continuously wearing you down. And if you get two, six, seven, eight, nine you know you're in a fight. And you're quite right in what you say. We don't, we've never seen Joe under that kind of pressure before mm. against a world-class fighter. I can't wait. I think it's going to be a brilliant fight. I think you need more if you're Rakimov. You, you, you know, at this world level, this world-class level against someone so self-assured with the, the amateur pedigree that Joe's got, that, uh, that knack of being able to take the range of fighters, I think you need more. But for... for for the winner of this, is the Zelfa Barrett a definite? If he gets no, through I mean, Sanchez, not for by the way, I mean, look, Sanchez is a good opponent. Good opponent. I mean, look, Sanchez has much. I mean, Dilmanaji was it was a, a good fight, yeah. um, but Sanchez has operated at much higher level, and has good sort of good pedigree, really. Like in yeah. terms of big shows, like fought some world class fighters. He's tough, never been stopped. I think it's a, a tough fight for Zelfa. I think if Rakimov wins, I don't think we're going to see Rakimov against Zelfa Barrett necessarily but if Zelfa wins but what's important win well yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean like what you can't do I said to Sam Jones the other day we talked about Jack Catchell fighting Foley right if you labor to a victory it's very difficult for us to start calling out all these big fights mm. you need to make the statement Zelfa needs to go in and it's hard to do that against a guy who's so durable yeah. like Sanchez but if he can look good and even force a stoppage all of a sudden people want the Joe Caldina fight, mm. rather than Big us fight. just saying, you know, yeah, it's Cardiff against Manchester, that's it. People go, do you know, that's a great fight. Yeah. We want to see it. And that's what we said about Jack Catcher against Foley. You know, Foley's quite tricky and quite awkward. You've actually got to be aggressive in that fight. You've mm. got to make a statement because you're talking about you beat Josh Taylor, you did all these things. You can't then labour to a victory against Daryl Foley. You've got to destroy him. Yeah. And you've got to get people going, Jack Catchell should be the undisputed world champion. We want him in a big fight next. And that's the same for Zelfa. You need to make a statement. You don't want to get to nine up. or ten rounds and it's like, this isn't very exciting either. Mm. You know, you need to be able to say, this is the fight we need. And that's a tough fight. And, you know, there's a, there's a really, really good card. I mean, I love Gavin Gwynn against Craig Woodruff. Yeah. You know, these are the kind of fights that we love to see. And it's gone really quiet here and I feel really <laughs> awkward. Yeah. I've just realised that everyone, is, everyone is sitting at the top <laughs> yeah. table waiting. Yeah. Well, in that case, uh, head off, Eddie. Thanks very much. Um, uh, a reminder, if you needed it, uh, in Cardiff, Saturday night, a couple of days' time, live on the zone. The big one, super featherweight world title on the line with the IBF. Shafkat Rakim of the champion, Joe Caldina, the challenger.
He comes into this fight with a frightening reputation. A dangerous southpaw and rack him up. This is my opportunity. I'm going to grab it with both hands. Well, welcome back to Cardiff, ahead of a huge world title doubleheader on Saturday night. As we said, rolling in to the incredible fight between Ryan Garcia and Javonta Davis, live and exclusive on the zone around the world on Saturday night. The, conti the continuation of a tremendous schedule, of course, coming off the Anthony Joshua victory on April 1st. Cardiff this Saturday, we go to Guadalajara, another one of Tony Simms's charge. John Ryder fights for the undisputed world championship against Canelo Alvarez in front of 60,000 in Guadalajara. A couple of weeks later, of course, Katie Taylor returns to Dublin, well, for the first time against fellow undisputed champion Chantel Cameron in a tremendous fight. And the week after, Lee Wood gets his chance to become world championship again against Maurizio Lara. Unbelievable schedule coming your way on the zone and an unbelievable main event for us on Saturday night. It was just under a year ago when this man to my left, Joe Caldina, produced one of the knockouts of the year to beat a Gower and become IBF world champion. Hand injury and hand surgery stripped of the IBF title, some feel undeservingly, but all of a sudden gets a chance to become a two-time world champion without ever losing that world championship in the ring against this man, Shavkat Rakimov, the current IBF world champion, tremendous fighter, great team as well. And we'll start with the champion up here today, and we'll start with our good friend Igis Klimas, the manager. Igis, welcome. Um, a big fight, a great fight as well. We've seen a lot of politics unfold. We saw your man beat Zelfa Barrett to become world champion in Abu Dhabi, and this is a tremendous fight on Saturday night. You do doing cool always, every time to me. I, I have to start. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you. Thank you for having us here in Cardiff. I remember this town brings me very good memories. One of my fighters, Sergei Kovalev, became here champion 10 years ago, and I'm uh, happy to be back. Um, we know it's not going to be an easy fight. Uh, Cardina is a very good fighter, and we had to prepare for it. I believe uh, you know, I wasn't much around, but uh, Freddie was telling me we had a very good training camp, and he's, um, he's ready to defend his title. Obviously, Shavkat over the years has had some injuries, etc. but good momentum now, good win in Abu Dhabi, straight back into the wild card gym with Freddie as well. You feel like he's, he's ready now to, to win this fight and move on to unifications in the division? He's ready, and he will do you know, everything is possible to keep that title. And uh, I'm going to repeat, and we know we're ready. It's not going to be easy. Thank you, Igis. Freddie, welcome. Uh, me and you were going at it a bit in the ring in Abu Dhabi. I wanted Zelfa Barrett to win so badly. And I said to you that night, I've got someone that I believe will beat him. And that's this man to my left, Joe Caldina. You know your boxing. You know this young man's a great talent as well. But Shavkat looks in tremendous shape, ready to f defend his world championship in Cardiff. Yeah, we've had a really good training camp. And, you know, he's the last couple of months in my gym. And we have a lot of good sparring partners. I have 14 pro fighters, and he sparred with every one of them. I mean, he's in great shape for this fight, and he's ready to go. We know we're in a tough fight, and uh, this is a great place to have it. Obviously, a lot of people analyzing this fight talk about the, the slickness of, of Joe Caldina. We saw a great knockout victory last time, but also the strength and the work rate of Rakimov. Is, th is that the, the style m mix and match in this fight? Um, somewhat. You know, I hear how fast our opponent is and how quick he is and so forth. But when I watch the tapes, I'm really not as impressed with his speed that much. And I think I have the faster, stronger person. And I think that will make the difference in the fight. Well, it's going to be a great atmosphere, Freddie. I know you love uh, great nights. We expect I it. I do love great nights. And this is the best fight. And the best is always great. Thanks, Freddie. Pleasure to have you here. Shavkat, welcome. Um, Thank you. Last time you, you broke you. last time you broke a few British hearts in Abu Dhabi, but you're ready to do it again on Saturday night here in Wales. I'm born ready. We didn't need you for that bit, but thank you. <laughs> um, people talk about the speed of Joe Caldina, people talk about your strength. 
and also your work rate as well. You, you believe you can match this man in all departments on Saturday? The ring will show. Well, this is an easy one, Shaka. <laughs> Finally, I know you believe you win on Saturday night. How do you beat Joe Caldina to retain that belt? У меня очень хорошая команда. У меня был самый лучший тренер Фредди Роуч. И мы знаем ключ к победе. И мы об этом никому не скажем. И это все покажем вы. We have a very, I have a very good team with me. I have a greatest, best uh, coach, as uh, Coach Freddy uh, uh, Roach, and uh, we know the key to the victory, and we will prove it on Saturday. And, but we will not tell the key, show the key to anybody, but and we will, we will just show it on the ring on Saturday. Thank you, Chef Cat. The challenger, Team Joe Caldina. Charlie, first up for you. Um, of course, the, the joy of the victory against Agawa and then just the, the devastating news of Joe's injury as well. Somehow manoeuvred him back to this moment um, as the challenger, should be the champion, but doesn't matter. It's Rakimov on Saturday night and a huge fight for Joe Caldina. Yeah, it was obviously a great moment for the team, great moment for Joe when he won the world title. It was just that astonishing knockout. It was amazing to see the Cardiff crowd went crazy. and. Um, just a disappointment. We felt it was unfair that obviously he got stripped from being injured, but Matram, Eddie, Frank, you made a promise to get the title back, bring it back to Cardiff and give us the opportunity. Now it's up to up to the team, up to Joe Cordina to make the opportunity count and become a two-time world champion in the city of Cardiff. Thanks, Charlie. Tony, obviously a great victory against Agawa, um, as this sport always does, gives you highs and then kicks you in the nuts on the way down as well. And uh, the, the, obviously the injury to Joe Caldina, firstly, just after the fight, when he returned to, to train him, but then the devastating injury in the first round, I believe, or first punch of sparring for the Rakimov training camp as well. Um, been frustrating, but finally here, a massive moment for his career on Saturday. Yeah, it was, it was like a freak injury. And like, as you say, it was the first round of the spa, the first, the first uh, shot he landed. and. Uh, it was just a freak injury, and obviously he's had surgery on it. And uh, you know the hand's good now, and uh, he's got his opportunity to regain the title. And, you know we know it's going to be a really hard fight. Rakimov's a really good fighter. He's uh, tough. He's southpaw, so it's going to be hard. But Joe's uh, trained diligently for this fight, and he's been down, you know, in my gym in Essex since January, and uh, you know he's in, he's in fantastic condition and mentally and physically, you know, he's ready to go. You're up against a great trainer as well in this fight, and Freddie Roach believes his man is faster and, and stronger and better in all, all elements as well. You, you rate Rakimov very tough, good aggression, great, great work rate as well, as well, and you saw that in Abu Dhabi against Alpha Barrett. Yeah, you know, and Freddie, as you say, Freddie's a legend in our sport, you know, he's had so many world champions, you know, and he wouldn't be training him if he didn't think the fighter was good, so... You know, we know we've got a tough job on our hands, but I believe in Joe Caldina. You know, he's a, he, he's boxing IQ, he's like second to none. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great night. The atmosphere is going to be fantastic in the arena. And uh, we're just looking forward to Saturday night and getting in the ring. Joe, um, feel like you should be coming into this fight as world champion. I saw you talking to the media yesterday saying you still feel like world champion, but it would be nice to get that belt back and start that run for the unification and under, undisputed fights as well. But first thing first, you expect a very tough fight against this man on Saturday. Yeah, of course. Um, like people ask me, what do you think of him? He's a, he's a world champion at the end of the day. Um, so he's, I know, he, well, I've seen him. He's tough, he's strong, he's fit. Um, but I've always said, you've got to have that little bit more and I just don't believe he has that to beat me. But we will see on Saturday. Um, I'm grateful that I've got the opportunity once again, thanks to you, uh, Matchroom Dazon, um, for giving me this opportunity back in my hometown. So, but yeah, he's a, it's going to be a tough night, tough night Saturday. Obviously, this time, much bigger crowd. I think only 
some fighter returns, 80 or 90 tickets left, are going to be completely sold out. We've got special performances, we've got anthems, we've got everything. It's going to be an amazing atmosphere on Saturday night and a great springboard for you if you can become two-time world champion without ever losing your, your belt in the ring. It'll be an amazing moment for yourself and Welsh boxing. Yeah, of course. Obviously, the anthems, the performances and all that stuff, that's, it's, all, um, it's all good on the night, but the first and foremost, we have to get that win. Um, for me to bring big nights of boxing back to Cardiff again and again and again, like Joe Calzaghe done, um, and give other fighters the opportunity to showcase their talent around the world. So, um, And that was always my plan when I come into pro boxing. Uh, once Joe left, uh, retired, then it was like he sort of went dead. You had Lee Selby becoming a world champion, but he never really cemented his, uh, this as his home as a, as a fighter. So, yeah, for me, that's what I wanted to do. And I believe, yeah, after last my last win um, last year in June, that was the start. But we've had that little bit of a, a bit of a break. So now I get this title back on, um, on Saturday. And then that's the start where all the big nights um, start happening once again. I know that every fight will say, you know, win by any means necessary but when you envisage the fight I know you're you're a deep thinker in that yeah. respect as well when you look at his aggression yeah. and his style do you see this fight ending inside the distance on Saturday night it could do it could do um, like you said his aggression he comes forwards um, he's fit he's strong and he does look to I ain't got to go look for him put it that way um, so yeah it, it could end in, in, in the distance but I, I just go out there to win get the win and then I push on but yeah I said the same with Ogawa I just want to get the win and, and, and move on and yeah like I said if it, if it goes within the distance I'm happy because like you say in boxing you don't get paid for overtime and finally as well for all your commitment and sacrifices to the sport the GB squad boxing around the world as well the sacrifices you make from being away from the family up in Essex as yeah. well no doubt about it absolute must win Oh, Saturday for night. sure. Listen, I've said it over and over again to people. They ask me, oh, how long have you been boxing? Well, it's mad that you live away up in Essex when you're in camp. I said, mate, I've been doing this for 10, 11 years. When I started boxing at 16, two years, 18, I was on a GB squad. And from then, I lived in Sheffield for seven and a half years. Turned pro, thought I was going to be at home, set at home. And I just knew for me to keep away from all the distractions, I had to move away. And when I was in camp, now I was up with Tony Sims for the, since I was 18, and now I'm 31. I've been living away from home, sacrificing, missing kids birth, my kids' birthdays, my first birth, the first birthday, birthdays. Um, I almost miss, miss two of their births. So everything I'm doing now and sacrificing now is for them in the future. And he's standing in the way for me, providing for my kids. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a big night for me on Saturday. Cool. Big night for you and a tremendous night in Cardiff. The IBF Junior Lightweight or Super Feather, wherever you are in the world, World Championship on the line between the champion Shavkat Rakimov and the challenger this time, Wales' is Joe Caldina as well. Tremendous night of boxing, as we said, before the bell action into the main card with Jordan Thompson against Luke Watkins, Zelfa Barrett against Jason Sanchez. Great fight for the British title between Craig Woodruff and Gavin Gwynn and the World Championship on the line between Sandy Ryan and Marie Hule as well. Great night of boxing, all live and exclusive on the zone, going into Tank against Ryan Garcia. We're going to pose for this World Championship fight down here in a head-to-head, -head, and we'll see you on Saturday night. Thank you. Final question for you, then, whilst we, we do the head-to-heads. If you're in Joe's position, you know this is the guy you were going to fight anyway in your first defence as champion. Let's assume the IBF had let him hang on to his belt for the year that he's been out, at, and he was going into this fight defending the title rather than being a challenger. Does anything particularly change for him? Does his mentality change as a fighter? What would you be feeling nah. if you were in his position? Look, again, I've touched it before, you know, with the amateur pedigree that he had. It's just another fight for Joe. He, you know, he understands the importance of it. He understands that there's a lot more history involved in this now with the fact that he can be a two-time world champion. But I think it's just another fight. It's the same it's opponent. Um, it, it, it's going to be a brilliant fight. But I, I kind of tend to agree with Eddie. Like, I think it's a fight that... Joe can only lose uh, like, uh, in the sense that he, he can throw it away. If he throws it away, unless he throws it away, sorry, he doesn't lose this fight. I just think he's got everything in his artillery to win this fight. Uh, I think we need to see more from Rakimov, the champion. Um, I think he can't just rely on that bullish physical strength 
to try and grind down Joe Caldini because like I said before you know it the distance will pass the final bell will ring uh, and you'll be way behind on the car so I think it's important for him to try something different set traps try and land big shots as opposed to rough up Joe Caldini who's just in my opinion too good on his feet hands are quicker uh, he's just got everything on his side in my opinion it's a lot uh, a lot of change at the top in this division in recent months Hector Luis Garcia Oshiki Foster looked really good against Ray Vargas to become the uh, the new WBC champ and of course uh, Emmanuel Navarrete exercised his right as the uh, WBO champion to go up and, uh, and become champion in another weight division he's the fourth champion so the, the winner of this has got options to potentially unify and it's, uh, it's a division that you'd have the winner of this is a, a strong favorite if there was a path to, to undisputed to, to get there as as well it could be joe called in yeah i mean th th there's great options for the winner here certainly i mean for us here in the uk for joe with Zelfo and then the opportunity to unify there, there's options and you always want that you, you need to be you know excited about the future but he's got a very tough job on his hand don't get me wrong though i have joe the favorite in this one rackamov's the champion he, he self-assured he believes in himself he gets the job done he gets the job done yes. regardless though there's vulnerabilities we have seen him drop we have seen him hurt he gets the job done but don't blink, this is going to be a cracker. Okay, uh, 10 fights on the bill, all starts at 4.15 on before the bell. There are six, uh, five fighters, I beg your pardon, including three uh, Welsh fighters local uh, in the house and Sky Nicholson uh, as well. And then Jordan Thompson and Luke Watkins will do battle to open the show. Zelfa Barrett against a really good fighter in Jason Sanchez. Uh, Gavin Grin and Craig Woodruff will contest the British title for the second time. Sandy Ryan and Marie Pierre Ule will do battle uh, for the vacant title at 147. And then, of course, Joe Caldina will cha challenge Shavkat Rakimov for the title that he was stripped of last year through injury will the belt be heading back east or can the welsh wizard cast a spell over cardiff again it will then head over uh, to las vegas tank and ryan garcia are all live on the zone this weekend a massive night of boxing thanks for coming to this afternoon we'll see you at the weigh-in 1 p.m tomorrow it is go time doesn't get much bigger than this jmx is turning up the heat let me go This is where the competition really comes to life. Brilliant, absolutely superb.